Let's take a look at how the economy grows, 1830 to 1860. Let's take a look at how industrialization really starts in America, as well as urbanization, and even a development of a new working class in America. We will see some of this in this video. We'll tackle the rest of it in the next video. And let's start with railroads. Railroads were an invention in England that first make their way over here in the United States in 1830. The first railroads are built in 1830 in, the America, in America. And they are quickly seen as a very profitable investment, as a good way to move goods and people around the country, and as a profitable way to invest your money. And as a result, we see major growth of the railroad industry as even in the 1830s. So much so that by 1840, there is just as many miles of railroad track as there are of canals, which has had a big head start on railroads. More shipping is still done on canals, despite the fact that they're slower. That's because early on, canals are still cheaper. And remember, states like New York and Pennsylvania had invested large amounts of money in developing canal systems, and they want to see a return on their investment. So some states did not allow any railroads to be built, or at least any that would directly compete with canals, at least for a little while until the canals had actually been paid off. With the increase of investment, even investment from European investors, by 1860, there are railroad tracks in every state east of the Mississippi. And over time, we're going to see improved track production, and we're going to see stronger trains uh, leading to longer trains, and prices are going to begin to drop. They can pull more cars with these stronger engines. And prices drop. And by 1860, canals will be obsolete. No longer really in use in any substantial form. And the railroad industry grows other industries, especially the iron industry, which sees a big increase in demand for iron as a result of railroad construction. And railroads are expensive. Railroads need lots of money, need lots of capital. And as a result, we see more corporations formed. These are publicly owned companies. These are companies that are owned by stockholders. And we start to see a new kind of stock. We see what are called preferred stock payments. These are people who own stock in the company and they get paid first. If there's a limited amount of profits, the preferred stock owners are going to get paid first. However, they do not have any voting rights in the corporation. So in other words, they are not allowed to help choose the board of directors for the corporation. Officially, the government's economic policy was laissez-faire, was stay out of the economy, was not to get involved. But in reality, the states did a whole lot during this time period of railroad growth. The states loaned money to railroad companies. The states bought stock in railroad companies. The states um, really want to encourage railroads to be built because it would lead to economic growth for them. And the federal government even helped out. They helped plan routes and they gave large chunks of federal land to the railroad companies. So much so that in 1850, by 1850, the Illinois Central Railroad Line had received over 2 million acres of land from the federal government. And by 1860, the federal government total had given out over 40, over, had given land to over 40 different railroad companies. It's at this time that we begin to see the growth of the factory system where we have workers that are now supervised by a supervisor. They're working in one place. They're getting paid cash wages for hourly work. And most importantly, we're using interchangeable parts where all of the pieces are the same so that they can all be assembled together easily and efficiently without worrying about which piece goes with which. They're all the same, so they all go together. And we see what's called a specific order of tasks. This is like an assembly line without the conveyor belt moving the thing down the line. 
So there is a specific order of tasks for putting things together in this new fact factory system. We see this first with the textile industry and then later with firearms and later with clocks and sewing machines. By 1850 though, most manufacturing is still done in workshops. We have not yet undergone an industrial revolution.